this is Charlie Montefiello with BlueBearFlutes.com, BlueBearArts.com. We wanted to bring you another video today on how to make the track area of your flute. The track area and the little knife edge of the sound hole are the two most important parts of the flute to make it sound. Um, you know, getting it in tune, of course, is very important. Having the right hole spacings and the right diameter, and there's certainly a lot of problems we could run into in flute making. But getting the track area right is very crucial. So what we're going to do is we're going to display basically the way that I've been doing it for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, prior to that I used a knife and used different kinds of augering tools and what have you, but now I'm pretty well settled on, on using the fire method. Uh, the fire method is kind of dangerous, also very hot and, uh, you know, I can't say I haven't got burned. Today, working on some different items, uh, I handed my wife a piece of bamboo that I thought was not too hot. She's like, ow! <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I just I can't feel it anymore. So, uh, always be careful where safety protection equipment is necessary and, uh, you know, certainly be very mindful of what it is that you're doing. Uh, so, come on and let's see how to make that flute track today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is auger down this piece. This portion of it's seen better days. I've used it a lot. I sharpen it regularly, but I haven't in a couple of a couple of weeks. Uh, this Forstner bit is about a one and three quarters, but depending on what size area here you want to auger out, you know you could use whatever size Forstner bit you need. You notice that there are some pieces of burr right here that I'm going to cut out, just kind of gently, and then right here we have the little slant area that we want it to be kind of slanty, just a little bit of an angle there, Try not to take out too much, clean this up with some sandpaper or the sander, and so that's basically my block area here. Um, that's the starting part of the block area. The next part that we have to do is the track inside, and that's the kind of kind of tricky part that a lot of people find a billion different ways to do, and I've tried at least a billion different ways, and I stick with burning. Oh. This rod, very similar to this rod, but a little bit larger. Um, these rods are just an iron rod. It's something I get from Lowe's or Home Depot or hardware store. Ace Hardware is good. Um, and then I grind this part here into a square, and then I grind it a little bit thinner. Not too thin, because it'll wear out quickly for me, whereas, you know, thin works fine, but you may want to... Uh, you may want to, to be able to keep it for a while and heat and carbon buildup causes the iron to flake away after a period of time, after thousands of flutes. Um, so if you're making thousands of flutes, you might make it a little bit thicker. Anyway, funny, funny anyway. Um, this particular part, basically I, I want to square it off into whatever size. Here's a good example of the size of my general flute track. And I'm going to take a break from talking just for a second to go ahead and use my fire. One thing I learned is to uh, use my fire while it's hot and then go back to doing something else. So we started our square hole here. I'm going to clean it up in just a second. So that's the beginning of that. Um, but back to the rod. The rod basically I just squared up with the sander and it wears out my sanding belt so I always use a specific metal sanding belt to do this with. Um, but I, uh, I square it off with my sander, then I heat it up about, say, an inch down. However long you want this track to be, you want to heat the rod up about three-fourths of that length. Take some pliers. Did you have me some pliers back there, buddy? One of my other workstations. There we go. And then after we heat it up with the pliers, we grab it when it's glowing red and just gently bend it down. And uh, that little bend makes this excellent L shape that we'll be using in just a second to make our track. The other end of this rod here, this is a quarter inch rod that I've got. This is a 5 16th. Um, the quarter inch rod I use for some of my smaller flutes. You can tell the size of this is a little bit smaller, probably about 3 16 wide. Um, but this end of it I tend to use to burn my holes in my flutes. So I drill them out with about a 19 30 seconds and then burn them out with either a quarter or five sixteenths. Next we're going to make 
the other sound hole, or actually the air supply hole, I guess we can call it up here. One of the real tricks you want to make sure that you uh, are careful of is keeping the two holes virtually parallel with one another. You want a parallel line here and a parallel line there. And this hole's already nice and square. This one I didn't square up too good because I want to spend a little bit more time on it. This guy here is pretty square. This one just kind of gently, not using so much force this time to create the hole. Originally it was also a 1930 seconds hole like these guys and uh, I think that's a 1930 seconds I've been using. It might be a 316. Nope, this guy here is 316. How about that? I don't even know my own drill bits. Um, so basically I start off with a 316 hole. I have a 516 rod which I have sanded down to a quarter inch wide. That doesn't confuse you. <laughs> and then I burn my square hole through the 316 hole. I burn a little bit on this guy, and then I burn it nice and square on this one. Then I go back and I clean this guy here up a little bit. There's a reason for that madness, I have to tell you. Um, these holes here are the most important, the most pertinent, the most significant special hole in the entire flute. It's the one that makes it make a sound. So it's very important. It's actually a little too thick right now. I don't think you can see it. I'll use my knife to point here. But the distance between here and the inside of the flute wall is actually about an eighth, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch thick. And that's going to basically give it a hard wall to hit. So we're going to slant that part right now by using this at an angle very gently once again. Not too much fire. And that actually squared my hole up the rest of the way. Because when you create the slant, typically you uh, tend to burn too much off of the top end here. It's the thinnest part. You typically uh, burn too much off of that. And in doing so, you'll wind up causing your hole to go way down here or way up there or something of that nature. The fire is, is a difficult trick, basically, to uh, to learn how to use. So, But it is after you learn how to use it, I mean, it will really help you turn out some flutes much more quickly. I also have a habit that I have established of breathing before I put the fire down and exhaling when it starts smoking when I put the fire down. And this keeps you from breathing the bad fumes or vapors into your lungs. I mean it's just a habit. If I've painted a lot and it's something I've learned from painting as well. But whenever you spray, shh, I'm exhaling, just like I'm going shh, making the sound with my mouth. I actually exhale either out my nose or out my mouth, and I stop spraying and I take a breath. And uh, as long as the vapors and the fans and everything's doing right, that's ideally the best way to not get these things in your lungs. And the bamboo fire, you know, the smoke, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, three other gases it might be coming off of at the same time. They may not be that bad for you in such small quantities. You can see me talking here and exhaling at the same time that the smoke starts to come out. Anyway, they may not be terribly bad for you in such a small quantity. However, I personally like to avoid it at all costs. i use my other burning rod here for just a minute. We were using it earlier for another project. i heat that end up so I can go ahead and burn these guys out. One other thing I like to use is a little flat spade or push bit uh, in my uh, my little exacto knife here. This guy I think I got in a package of multi different types of blades from Hobby Lobby. Uh, I think Michaels carries them as well. But uh, you can order it from exacto just to get a whole pack of these which is what I used to do until too many companies decide they don't want to sell those. But exacto I think still carries them on their website. I don't have the number here. It looks like it's a 17. That's right. It's a 17 quarter inch wide push blade. And what I'm doing is I'm using it to kind of scrape, clean off, and define the track area. I'm not using it real strong. I mean, it's not that sharp in the first place. I've worn this one down quite a bit. But I'm just cleaning some of the scar tissue off that the fire created. 
And it's true, a small sanding stick or a piece of sandpaper folded in the shape of a square will do this job. But if you want to do it quickly, though it may take a little bit of precision, you can use a knife to do it. There was a time when I only carved this track out with this knife. I didn't make as many flutes in as I do now. Burning the hole out. If you notice, some of these holes are not exactly perfect. I was in a little bit of a hurry trying to get this together so we could make this video before the sun went down when the video uh, recording time is just right. But if you watch, just for you guys that are beginning, I'll show you a little trick here. I'm going to straighten that hole over here right up by burning more on the other side. How about that? And you don't have to poke it in after, or put it back over here in the fire after you poke it in each time. I actually usually burn four or five of them out at a time, but for demonstration purposes, I like to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So this hole here is now perfectly straight with that one, and it looks like the rest of them are reasonably straight. I don't know if you guys can see it, but once you start doing any kind of woodworking, you want to really train your eyes. Um, you can see that this hole is slightly this side, a little bit to the left. This one slightly to the right. Once again, a little to the left. This is probably one in line here, and these two are actually slightly to the left. Where did I fix that all up, though? Just a habit. Just a habit to get into, making sure that you keep your holes perfectly straight. I did a repair job for a nice lady in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this past week. And uh, after doing that repair job, I thought, you know, I really need to make sure my holes are perfectly straight, because I tell you what, the dude that made that flute didn't spend as much time on making the hole straight. And if you look, I mean, within a, maybe a micron, I think, they're pretty straight. Or at least they look straight to me. They may look worse on the video. The reason I'm heating my rod up again, if you'll notice, there's a little bit of scar tissue in some of the holes, even after burning them. I'm going to go back through them one more time, just really quick. Now they're really nice and clean. How about that? Turn my fire off, put the rod back up. And this little rod holder is just a simple thing. We took some neodymium magnets and super glued them to the front of my old drill press here. It's not really as old as it looks, believe me. Um, but uh, I super glued them on there. And if you get the super glue hot, of course, it'll release. And if you get the neodymium magnets too hot, they'll actually stop being magnets. Um, but uh, they work out great for holding my my flute burning rods for me. It's an excellent way to do it. I used to put them on my sander for the longest time. All this talk, let's see if this thing plays. I'm just picking one of my general flute blocks up here. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down. I believe the bottom note's going to be a little flat on it. I typically make them that way so I can tune them later. Yeah, very flat, but I'll fix that up. In either case, this dude here, if you notice, my track has a slant on one side. I do it for testing. This is my little test track because it's shorter than the others. Slant on one side, and if you push it down this way a little bit, it'll actually cause the flute to go a little bit flat. Uh, with the right type of slant and the right size, you can drop a flute's tone about one full step. There's a difference between A and B um, by using a slanted track. I'm going to turn this guy around because a flute that's made in tune, that's made the way I want it to be, should have a flat edge there, just like this, and usually end right on the end of the top of the blowhole. And it's jumping octave on that top note because it's about this much too long. And as soon as I take care of that, it'll be good to go. But you get the gist of how it works, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email. Uh, write us a, a note here on YouTube. Send us a message on Facebook. It's bluebeararts.com, and it's also uh, facebook.com forward slash bluebeararts, and, of course, YouTube channel you found. But uh, in either case, this is Charlie Montatuyela again, signing off for today, and thanks again for watching our videos.